And do we have an agenda in front of us? And do we do need somebody to accept the agenda or to a motion to, to go forward? If you raise your hand and say your name out really loudly, Sandra will record it. And I, I will actually repeat it back. Can somebody make the motion to accept the agenda for today? Pat, Pat Burns says she will. And seconded by? Marg Rude. R H U D E? That's it. Okay, Margaret Rude. Oh, I know you. Yes, you do. Ah, okay. Well, thank you very much. Everybody in agreement? Raise your hands and say aye. aye. No, aye. There we are. No, you're like pirates. Um, we have a uh, motion to accept the minutes of November. Tw Is it that long ago we met? November 29th? That's such ages ago. Anyways, here we are. We need somebody to move that, please. Somebody different. Who have we got? So say your name out. Wenda Moore. Wenda Moore? Wenda Moore. Okay, I think Sandra's got that. Is it spelt the regular way? M-O-O-R-E? It is. There we go. And seconded by, go ahead. Claire Morrison. Claire Morrison. Claire with an E at the end. Right. Yes. And everybody in favor? Very good. We uh, have a financial report, and it is inside your document. We, we are waiting for the injection of uh, some, you notice the number at the, the end? We are operating on fumes right now, but we've done good things. We have the, uh, the ultimate dream home uh, money that we earn as part of that project that will be coming to top up that, that number. So you can have a look at what we did over the last little while. And uh, just because, remember, we're not a service club. We're not, uh, our uh, real mandate is not to collect a lot of money, but any money that we do have, we try to disperse to community organizations like we did. Just to remind you, those who, who have not um, been following us or attending meetings, uh, one of the things we did was after the Meals on Wheels uh, I don't know what to call that, invasion? Is that right? Uh, somebody broke into Meals on Wheels and uh, spoiled their food, left the fridges open, uh, contaminated their spices. Um, we don't know if it was malicious. Well, I mean, it was malicious, but we don't know if it was just kids or who it was. So when um, we heard about this, the board uh, and uh, myself said, uh, reached out to the executive director and said, how many people have stepped up? How much money do you need? We can give you this much. Because there are members of ours, and not just that, members of our, our community who do rely on Meals on Wheels. So we wrote them a check, and uh, that's where some of the money went. And uh, we will gladly do that again when we got more money. And uh, so we have, a mo we, have a, we have a financial report. Somebody needs to move to accept that financial report. Just say your name out loud. John Lindsay. And a second. And, oh, tell us all who you are, Cora Turcotte. <laughs> Cora Turcotte. I was waiting for her to actually say it. That's Cora. I've known Cora since 19... Oh, a, a long time ago, right? 75, maybe? All the way back at Bell Canada. Anyways, Cora Turcotte seconded. All in favor? There we go. Wow. Now, Can I ask uh, a go ahead. Sorry for when you have events and it says donations, yes. Donations from. Let me go to that page. Donations. Donations and cards and receipts. Uh, it's this last line down there. Uh, we got five hundred dollars from somebody. Uh, Ken would have to answer that question. Uh, we do budget for people to step up. In fact, we would gladly accept any donations that you want to make. Have you got your checkbook with you? No, but I don't know what you mean. It says events and it says advertising, postage. Right. Oh, so we, oh, the donations, so that was not donations coming into us, that was donations going out. So that would be to things like Meals on Wheels. So that's going out. Yes. Okay. There we go. Thank you for making that clear. I always assume that we're getting donations. Um, chair's report. So I don't have to read it all to you, but I'm going to read the, uh, the, the centerpiece uh, because it is germane for all of us who uh, park where there are parking meters, uh, drive where there are driveways. Um, we, uh, 
we can't get into our own driveway sometimes, and we certainly can't even. I, an older gentleman was downtown with me, and he, he said, I feel like a scoff law. And I had to think, what is a scoff law? Do you, does everybody know what a scoff law is? It's somebody who sees that there's something that has to be done, like some regular thing, like paying a parking ticket. In this case, it was paying for parking in a parking meter. He said, can you help me? I can't get there. So I put the picture of the parking meter that he could not get to. It's, it's probably in black and white in yours. It's harder to see. Like you needed ice axes and crampons and ropes and a whole team of people to help you to you know, climb Mount Everest to put your quarter in this parking meter. And, um, and he just wasn't going to do it. And he said, you know, if I get a ticket, I, I don't know what to do. I said, well, you know what? I'm taking a picture of this. And if you get a ticket, I'll send that in for you. He didn't get a ticket, thank goodness. I think it was one of those days where the parking meter people were going, it's too cold to be out. They no, they probably, <laughs> well, they just saw that it was uh, expired. I was doing that blinky blinky thing. So if you don't like what you see downtown or anywhere, there is a telephone number to call. Don't call Ghostbusters, dial 311 and say, I've got a problem on my street. I've got a problem. I was going to the doctor and I could not use the parking meter. Um, I've, here's, here's Cora's, if you, I hope you don't mind, Cora's sister. She's, you come here in, in an assistive device. She's doing amazing things after, after damaging both legs. We couldn't expect her to go and put money in the parking meter, could we? No. So if you don't like what you see, demand better. Now, oh my goodness, I forgot it back there. How many of you read the Sudbury Star and it says 3.5% increase in taxes? And then it said... 7.4% increase in water fees. Okay, and then it said 1.5% for capital investments. Now, if you do the math on all this, it's a significant increase, especially if you do things like you have a nice place and you water the front lawn, you do laundry, you take a bath every day or a shower every second day, you do laundry, um, because we also get charged for sewage which is based on how much water you use. So I'm thinking this increase is not 3.5%. It's a much bigger whack at you. They're, they're reaching into, you don't like it? Dial 311, talk to your counselor, talk to the mayor and say, I'm angry and I'm not gonna take it anymore. No, you don't have to say that because they'll probably put you on some list where they say this person's, you know. Just call up and say, you know what? I really like what you do, but I'm not happy with this. So there's a whole page here that talks to you about taxes and things, but I want to point out one more thing. John made it very clear to us that many of us want to go away during the winter time. I have included a couple of paragraphs on traveling, and I will point out to you that you must, must, must consider health insurance, travel insurance, cancellation insurance, and all those things because things can go wrong. The possibility of, in, sorry, the possibility of infection by the spine of a sea urchin can wreck your whole holiday in Dominican Republic or Jamaica or wherever you are. The other thing that can happen to us is something terrible called winter. You land in Toronto, you're waiting for your next flight home, or you come from Sudbury and you're in Toronto and you're waiting and it's a snowstorm. What do you do? If you buy a product called On My Way when you purchase your tickets at Air Canada's website for $28 or $35, it's no longer your responsibility. Most of you are of an age where you can't get gold preferred visa cards anymore, so you don't get insured in these kind of things, trip interruption, but On My Way make sure that they find you a hotel. They find you another airline that maybe is flying. Or they say, you know what, we can't get you there from Toronto. We're gonna fly you to Montreal because the storm isn't there yet. Or our aircraft is, is waiting for it. You know, we'll send people there. It's their responsibility. And you just go, give me another drink. I'll be just fine. So turn it on, small investment, they'll arrange meals, a rental car, hotel accommodations, and the rest of it. Um, the stuff on the AGM coming up, uh, the Faces of Canada I mentioned as well. I actually present, there's a picture of me presenting Brian Bigger with a copy of that. I would suggest you, you do that. I just want to also tell you that you should pay attention to other bills in your life. 
How many of you are angered because internet and TV is going up? Like significantly. And it's 5% this year, five, well this point, 5% perhaps later in the year, perhaps 5%. What is this going to end? It, it just keeps spiraling out of control. Um, so I called my service provider and I said, you know, I'm really not happy with the service I'm getting and the price you're charging. And they said, and I said, I'm thinking of switching. And they went, oh, don't do that. We can give you a better rate. And it was fantastic. So um, because John is here, I want to mention something. As January wraps up, get ready to have some sand for those icy days that we see during the freeze and thaw period that we have sometimes in February. Try to avoid buying melters and salt. And maybe just leave a skiff of snow on your walkways because that provides a little bit of traction. If you bring it right down to the pavement or you, you polish it with a, a broom, you're going to have a slippery situation. So avoid trips, slips, falls, whether physical or financial. And uh, seek out some sunshine. Just take a walk at Lake Laurentian perhaps uh, if you feel the urge or can canoeing and canoeing. <laughs> Did I just say canoeing? Kay not even kayaking. Snowshoeing. Snowshoeing. Or just walk around your neighborhood. I see a few hands. Yeah, yes, can Claire. I Yes. So now that you're home and now you want to walk during the day, so I phoned Hydro, but there's nothing they can do for us. No, there isn't. Has anybody ever... Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that. That's a great segue. In English and French, many of you received one of these as you walked in, the affordability fund. That is what that is. You might want to talk to those people about a number of things. If you are paying, if you have electric heat particularly, and more than 5% of your income is being devoted to paying hydro bills, they will help you. 5%? I, I think it's 5%. Okay. If you have an old fridge downstairs, maybe a beer fridge, and you've got a fridge in your kitchen, maybe you have three fridges, some people do, um, they will actually help remove two of those and the third one and give you a brand new fridge, energy efficient fridge. They will help buy a dryer for you, a more efficient dryer. There, there are a number of programs out there. So um, I made a point, some of you have fridge magnets on your chairs, the purple or blue and yellow. Take those homes. Now, here's the thing about CARP, I should mention this. And I, Sandra's probably saying to me, get on and do this meeting. I want to tell you right now, Remember, you are also a conduit for information to your neighbors and friends and your street. If you have something of value, like take these brochures home and go, do you know what, Claire, you didn't come to the meeting. Well, Claire did, she's here. Claire, you didn't come to the CARP meeting, but I've got information for you. Can I give it to you? Is this, would this interest you? Hey, I just finished my Zoomer magazine. I just got the latest issue. I'm going to give you the last one. When I'm done with this one, I'll give it. Get that information out to people. Don't just put it in the blue box. Um, Carp Connects, some of you have seen this before. Please consider looking at it. One of the uh, ones that I think is the most valuable financially is your Carp Member Benefits Guide. And it tells you about all the places where you can get discounts. Now, I will tell you, no longer Swiss Chalet. If you used to have a deal where you could go to Swiss Chalet and get half a chicken and whatever for a discounted price, but uh, that's not one of them anymore. And uh, nice, some of you might have got this one, Carp Fights for the Things You Care About Most. Yes? Um, my husband and I, we own an uh, electrical gas company and we install furnaces, electrical furnaces. Electri this lady, her, her husband and herself have an electrical heating company. Okay, this energy save program that the government has. It's a bit of a scam. Oh. In, in that they charge you more for the, uh, for the appliance. You do get the rebate back and you have to use their specified. Oh, special authorized dealers or things like yes. that? See, I don't know about that. I only listen to Wendy. Okay, so it's not net zero. Well, don't buy a Bosch appliance for one. I went online today. I'm writing a story about smart appliances. Do any of you know that you can buy it? Your new appliance might have a camera inside. And it, it looks, it's called look inside. So you could be at the grocery store and go on your, your device and you go, oh, I wonder if I have any celery at home. 
and you look at it and it's, oh yeah, I've got celery there. Oh no, it looks bad. I'll buy some more celery. But more importantly, the smart appliances could help you look inside your parents' fridges or your, not if, not if they don't want you to, of course, right? You just can't go, oh, I'd like to look at my neighbor's fridge and see what they're eating today. No, I can't do that. That's not what you can do. But I was speaking to a friend and he said, I'm worried about my parents and whether there's anything in the fridge when my dad comes back from hospital. And the parents, of course, are in Strathroy, I think I said, Strathroy, and he's here in Sudbury. And he can use look inside and find out if his parents have anything in their fridge. It'll even look at the yeah. contents of your fridge and suggest a recipe, yeah. which well, is yeah, a fantastic. Really short. Yes, short. or expired, <laughs> or you know, you've been drinking too much beer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't judge me, please, fridge. Just leave me alone. I'll keep giving you things. Okay, so I'll, I'll unplug you if you talk badly to me. <laughs> I think they've got backup stuff too, but anyways, yes. And don't buy a Bosch. I looked at a Bosch fridge today, just a small fridge. It was $8,000, but it is German engineering, so it'll last a thousand years. Um, we have guest speakers, and jo oh, we have two more questions, yes. I was 10 days at Christmas time without the heat because it was made in States. Burlington, my husband thought it was Burlington, Canada, but it was Burlington States. We wait for the parts 10 days. Where do you turn? Well, that's a great question and uh, one that should be addressed and one that perhaps I'll talk to you about later. Yeah, Burlington, Vermont is not Burlington, Ontario. Uh, if you buy a furnace from some companies, and I'll give you an example, I think it's Train. Uh, not made in Canada, and if a part fails, you have to wait for it to be air shipped to you by Perlator or FedEx or any of those things. If you've got an older model, uh, same kind of thing will happen to you. Um, new one, second time. New one, oh no, you've got trouble. I think, look, wait for the third time. No, okay, no third times, trust me. But yes, this time of year, no furnace, bad news. Even Christmas time, it wasn't wasn't pleasant. I mean, we need, so I would get some candles at home. I would buy, have you got needles? Crochet a big, big blanket? No, it's too late for that. Electric blanket. Electric blanket, okay. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me bring up Joy Werta. Joy is going to introduce our first guest. I think many of you are here not to listen to me, but you are here to listen to, uh, I must mention too that all the committee reports are in your handout. And uh, I forgot to mention, we need a motion to accept the committee reports. Can somebody, yes, Joy Werta did it, who did a second? Marianne, uh, Marianne did it. And if there are new businesses down below, we will mention that the, uh, the AGM, I think the date has changed uh, for some reason. So anyways, I will do that later. Joy, welcome. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for coming out today and uh, spending an afternoon with us on this beautiful sunny day. Even though it's cold, it is gorgeous out. Our first speaker today is here from the Canadian Blood Services and I'd like to introduce you to Jenny Fortin. He's a little taller than me. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Jenny Forte and I am the uh, Territory Manager for Canadian Blood Services in Sudbury. Um, our, our previous worker actually got to retire this uh, fall, so I think I've got another at least 30 years ahead of me before I could see the rainbow. Um, but anyways, what I wanted to talk to you is just, we've changed. Uh, there's been a lot of changes with Canadian Blood Services, especially uh, since we celebrated our 20th anniversary in the fall. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about those changes, uh, maybe convince a few of you who don't donate to roll up your sleeves. Um, and and then perhaps answer a few questions. I'm not a nurse, so I can't answer specific questions about medication eligibility, but I can surely point you in the right direction. Jenny, because everybody's here, they're going to take one sample to exit, right? Right. Yeah. They're each going to donate a pint. <laughs> So uh, as you can see, we've changed, uh, most notably in our logo. 
So the new infinity symbol is actually our, our new logo. And the reason for this change, one, because we wanted to celebrate our 20th anniversary in style, um, but two is a lot of Canadians didn't realize that Canadian Blood Services is managing our national blood supply. So uh, about 40% of Canadians still believe the Red Cross is the one that's managing um, our national blood supply. And of course, Canadian Blood Services took over from the Red Cross after um, the unfortunate incident of the tainted blood scandal. So prior to us managing the system, uh, it was managed by the Canadian or by the Red Cross, where it still is in many countries. Um, but unfortunately, it resulted in a lot of people getting um, tainted blood with uh, HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and many Canadians are still dealing with the effects of that um, unfortunate incident. So out of all of that, uh, the federal government decided to uh, take over the blood supply management for Canada, um, and now Canadian Blood Services is regulated um, by Health Canada, so by the federal government. So, you know, he was talking about uh, telling your, your counselor about changes you'd like to see. Same goes with Canadian Blood Services. If you'd like to see some changes, talk to your MP. Um, really important because we've made some promises. There are some promises made for eligibility criteria. A lot of changes have happened, some for the better, um, but ultimately we could still we can still reach a little bit more. So we need your help in pushing the federal government just a little bit more. So we don't just manage whole blood either. A lot of people think of Canadian Blood Services as solely whole blood and that's why we also wanted to change our logo is we actually have four components so we manage um of course, we manage the national blood and plasma supply, so um, everything from whole blood, platelets, and plasma. Uh, we also manage the national patient registry for organ donation and transplants. A lot of people aren't aware of that. We also manage the stem cell registry marrow network for Canada. Um, and then we're in the process of developing a cord blood bank where new mothers can actually donate their cord blood to help uh, facilitate uh, stem cell research in Canada uh, because their cord blood's so rich in nutrients that their stem cells can actually go on to help um, an unmatched patient in many cases. So we're in the process of developing that across Canada and we're actually seeing it uh, come about in major cities, so Toronto and Ottawa and Vancouver. So just a few questions. So hands up if you are a present or past blood donor. Incredible. Thank you. And now hands up if you know somebody who's ever received blood or you yourself have received blood. So, so quite a few of you. So what I'm getting at is the fact that one in two uh, Canadians um, are actually eligible to donate blood, yet only one in 60 does. So that's less than 4% of eligible Canadians are donating blood, yet one in two Canadians will either know somebody who needs blood or need blood themselves in their lifetime. So some things that uh, you can require blood for are cancer treatments, leukemia treatments, obviously car accidents, et cetera. So the need for blood never takes a holiday. There's a constant need. So we need to ensure that Canadians are consistently rolling up their sleeves and that we're getting new Canadians into our donor centers so that you know when those older donors do retire that we have the new blood in there to sustain our services. So why donate blood? So just out of curiosity, so when you come into the blood donor center, one person equals one unit of blood. So you donate various components of your blood, which I'll get into in a little bit. So one, one person is one unit. So how many people or how many units do you think it might take to help uh, a person with a heart surgery? How many units of blood? Just shout them out. Three, six, five. So you're pretty close. It is actually five donors. So it is five donors. So for a car accident victim, how many units do you think it might take? 10, 15, 8. So this one's actually pretty startling. Um, it could take up to 50. 
50 units of blood for one single car accident victim. Um, and this is why you often hear elevated messaging from Canadian Blood Services during summer and winter months because people are off vacationing, you know, they're not necessarily thinking about rolling up their sleeves or honoring their, their blood donation appointment just because life happens, right? But uh, during the summer and winston, uh, winter months, we often see uh, instances of car crashes raise, rise, right? So one donor can, or one recipient can use up to 50 donors just to help them with one car accident. Then we've got a cancer treatment. Could take up to eight or five. Five, my apologies. Five donors for cancer treatment. That's depending on the type of cancer. And then finally, leukemia um, can use about eight donors per week for the, the treatment, the duration of their treatment. So I actually got the opportunity to talk to um, a little girl the other day who has uh, leukemia treatment. She goes and undergoes leukemia treatments weekly, um, and she was very uh, gracious of, of the people that have given her uh, you know, an extra moment of life. So she wanted to say thank you to everybody who, do, who does donate or has donated in the past because you're certainly making an impactful um, an impact on, on these individuals' lives. And I, I often say to people that donating blood is probably one of the most selfless things that you can do uh, for somebody you don't even know because you're giving a little piece of yourself so that they can continue on. So when you donate blood, like I mentioned, one donation is, is one unit. So we take about 450 milliliters, and that's how much we use to pass on to other people. It, it is a little bit more. It's about 482, um, I believe, because we do take some tubes for testing, which is why we're one of the now one of the uh, safest blood management systems in the world. Um, but we take various components from you with whole blood. So we take your red blood cells, your platelets, your plasma, and your white blood cells. So after we take this, it goes down to Brampton, the blood goes down to Brampton, same day, and it gets put through machines called centrifuges that spin your blood really, really quickly and separate the various components of your blood. It's incredible what we're able to do now. So unfortunately, we have to discard those white blood cells because those are the pieces of you that are most like you. Those are your antibodies. So if we were to give those to somebody else, then they might have a reaction. But we separate the platelets, plasma, and red blood cells, and they can go to three separate recipients. So just 45 minutes of your time, you can be helping up to three people. So just a little bit statistics here on our Sudbury Donor Center. So our average donor age is in their 50s. Um, we need approximately 150 plus new donors each month to sustain our blood donor registry in Canada. And that's per um, collection site. So we have over 35 collection sites uh, across Canada and we service over 700 hospitals across Canada with exception of Quebec. Quebec has their own blood, man blood management system, it's called Hema Quebec, but Canadian Blood Services does work with Hema Quebec to facilitate research. So typically, for us to book one single appointment, it takes us about 13 phone calls to book one single blood donor appointment. And remember, less than 4% of eligible Canadians donate blood. And also, we have to typically double book our clinics to account for people who don't honor their appointments, to account for people who come in and that can't donate, and for other instances where people can't donate but do come in our doors. So uh, before I get into the little donation process, I just kind of want to say in Sudbury, we have daily quotas um, that we try to hit, so targets that we try to hit at our donor center. So a target for us on a regular day is 48 units. That's 48 people walking through our doors that are eligible to donate. We rarely hit target in Sudbury. Um, in fact, a lot of donor centers across Canada rarely hit target. Um, when we do elevated messaging, it tends to just give people that extra boost that they need to walk through our doors. But on a regular basis, I'd say we probably collect anywhere between 70 to 90% of our targets. So we need you guys, and why I'm here is to just help you, encourage you again to roll up your sleeve, but also talk about it a little bit more. Um, because, it, like I said, one in two Canadians will either need blood themselves or know somebody who needs blood. Can I ask a question? Yes. When, when you go into the high schools, mm -hmm. how does that affect this? Because um, I know some of the grade 12s will send a bus or a little bus set. Yeah, so we do have shuttles, um, and not just high schools, but we'll go pick up work 
places and work groups as well, or community groups. So even doing that, you don't meet your quota? No, um, because with high school students, what happens is a lot of them don't necessarily eat the best before coming in, or they don't hydrate themselves. So um, they're able to come in and start the donation, but you know sometimes they have to stop mid-donation, or uh, you have to be a certain height and weight, which I'll get into a little bit. So there are some eligibility criteria. So even though I might get you know 100 people at the donor center, the chances that those 100 people are all going to be able to donate or donate successfully um, are very small. So just before you donate, make sure you're feeling well. Obviously, you don't want to come to the donor center. With, um, we do have a, a French hotline, I believe it's 1-800-JEDUN. Uh, um, so there is French services available um, for those who need it. Uh, otherwise, uh, we also have our regular donor center in Sudbury. We've, we've moved for a couple years now. We're, we're located on Barry Down, so almost kitty corner to the uh, New Sudbury Shopping Center. Uh, we're right beside the Pizza Hut, so you can come donate blood and then get a pizza to go or order the pizza before you donate blood so it lines up perfectly. Um, yeah, and we're open Mondays and Tuesdays from 3 to 7 and Thursdays and Fridays from 8.30 till 12.30. And we do have the Partners for Life program. So if you're part of a group or organization that wants to roll up their sleeves together, you just have to contact us at the donor center, come in, you can speak with me, and uh, I'll send a shuttle, a free shuttle to go pick up your group and bring you all into the donor center. Uh, another perk is if you come in on Fridays, we often have free pizza because we do have our school groups that come in. So our grade 12 donors come in on Fridays, so we generally bring pizza in for the whole, the whole clinic. <laughs> are there any questions? So I just kind of, oh, yep, in the back. Yes, we do. So we have 14 mobile donor centers across northeastern Ontario. So if you have friends or family in the Valley, Lively, Zilda, um, we do go out there about once every four months. We're out there. Um, and then, too, we have donor centers. Our team actually travels up to Sault Ste. Marie, Timmins, Kirkland Lake, New Liskard, North Bay, uh, Blind River, and forgetting one, but uh, we're, we're, we're everywhere. <laughs> and then of course, if you're in the GTA, um, if you're a regular donor in Sudbury, but you're, you're finding yourself, you're traveling to Vancouver for a couple months, you can certainly donate at any donor center across Canada. Any more questions? No? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you having, thank you.